Good evening everybody. It's Tuesday the 23rd of June and we've just had some new announcements from the government which sound exciting and, and great for those of us who are looking forward to getting back to a bit more of normality in our lives about this um, pubs and restaurants and hairdressers opening up shortly on the 4th of July and this change to the social distancing um, or just distancing is hardly social is it from two meters to one meter that's going to coincide and happen at the same time and prior to this announcement happening I've been paying a little bit more attention to some of the science and research and some more data that's becoming available and so particularly today thought I'd talk about a topic that I know I've talked about before, but I'm feeling really, really passionate about this at the moment. So we've got this beautiful sunshine. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the last thing probably on people's minds is to be thinking about taking vitamin D as a supplement. You know, why would you need to? We know it's the sunshine. Um, we know we get it from the sunshine and the sun is shining. So, you know, it's brilliant. We don't need to worry about it in the summer. And just sort of bringing all of this together, I'm feeling really passionate about this, so that's why I decided to speak about this tonight. Um, and just to do a little recap, really, because um, I think this is important, and I've spoken about this before, but you won't all have heard me talk about this. Um, and that's with regards to vitamin D and its role in immunity. Um, and I am feeling really passionate about this because I'm actually finding it extremely shocking that not once do we hear anyone in government or scientific advisors anywhere telling you the steps that you can take to protect yourself against the coronavirus or indeed any other viruses that may come come along in the future. So I feel really passionate about it. Um, vitamin D, it has an absolutely significant role to play um, in our immunity, in helping us build a strong immune defence. Our bodies are designed to build and protect us um, from pathogens and microbes, bacteria and viruses. It's designed to do that and we will always come face to face with new and novel um, viruses and bacteria. And that's why the flu vaccine changes every year because um, the influenza, the flu does change slightly each year and that's why based on data that sort of comes out of Australia and they're ahead of us, the flu vaccine changes each year. So it, Immunity. So vitamin D has an absolutely crucial role to play in immunity. There are other things that I've spoken about and other nutrients that are also really important. Um, but vitamin D has what we call an immune modulating effect. So it helps us mount an immune defense, but it stops the immune system going into overdrive. And sometimes the body will try and do that and the immunity just sort of takes over and it doesn't know how to switch off. So it helps to um, build a strong immune defense. It is known to help the body destroy and protect itself from viruses and from bacteria, so from colds and flu and things like that. Um, so we may be told now that, um, and I heard just now, that the virus is not going to go away. I didn't expect it to in all realities. It's not going to go away and it's going to be around us, we don't know for how long, probably through next winter. I expected that to happen. It's unrealistic to say it's here one day and it's gone the next. Um, and that will be scary for people. So, of course, immediately the government's talking about a vaccine and one of the studies I've seen with regards to um, one of the trials with a vaccine is that you know it's created 20% uh, of significant side effects and this is a problem with trying to create a new vaccine and it does take time and we may never get one so not only is it may not be possible to find something that works but also trying to find something that doesn't have significant side effects um, so I think we need to be a little bit cautious in thinking well I'm not going to go out in public until the vaccine is going to come along. What we need to be doing is building up our own strong immune defense. And that's why vitamin D is so important. Um, 
So taking self-care in everything that you do. So why vitamin D? Why am I banging on about that tonight? And why am I saying in my headline, well, you know, the sun is shining, but take supplementation. Um, it may not be, but it is relevant. So there are some studies that are coming out now. I've known that vitamin D is very important for helping to build and mount a strong immune defense. But there are some new studies that are now coming out that is showing a significantly increased risk of mortality of death in those that are vitamin D deficient or those that are vitamin D insufficient. So there's been some studies done looking at those that have had the virus, looking at those that have died and looking at their um, vitamin D status. Now, one study, you know, you can't go on just one study. I appreciate that. And there's going to be a lot more data that needs to be collected. And there's one study that's doing the rounds. And some people may come back and go, well, you know, that was really unreliable the way the study was carried out. Um, but it was in Indonesia. And the results were that those that had showed a vitamin D deficiency with really low levels, there was a 98.9% uh, mortality in those that had the virus. Whereas those that had um, significant sufficient levels of vitamin D in their blood serum, there was a 4.1% mortality. Now it may be that the um, population of people they looked at wasn't representative of society but I think we need to look at that data and not disclude it and uh, therefore you know if this virus isn't going away then we need to think about building a strong immune defence and think about vitamin D. Um, so the other information that I've gathered is with regards to ethnicity, ethnicity that is the word isn't it? Um, because black and Asian people have darker skins or very dark skins, their ability to absorb vitamin D and well, it's a, absorb the UVB rays and then the body to be able to convert um, the vitamin into vitamin D in the body is very, very low. And this is why, one of the reasons potentially why death rates amongst black people and Asian people um, the death rates could be much, much higher because their vitamin D status may well be that much lower. It was something that I was critically aware of that the moment this virus started to take off in the UK was as we came out of winter, you know, it was March time. And through the winter months when we don't get exposure to um, sunlight, our vitamin D status is gradually going to fall lower and lower and lower because it's a fat-soluble vitamin we're not going to make it. We don't really get any significant amount from any of our foods. So we need it from the sunshine. And Public Health England have told us for many years, and I think it was 2016, that we should be supplementing vitamin D through the winter. My advice right now is, number one, think about doing a test. It is so cheap to do. If you're wanting to think about your health status right now, go and undertake a test. Um, I will think about posting under here how you do that. There is a university that does vitamin D testing. It's about £30. It's a finger prick blood test. Go and do it. However, when you get the results back, be careful with the analysis of the reading because if you do do that, the analysis will say um, if your level is above vitamin uh, 50, um, then that's absolutely fine. You've got sufficient vitamin D and I will question that. I think your vitamin D status should be at least 75 and up to 100 and that's the measure that you want to be at. Um, so go away and do that vitamin D test and find out right now what your status is. And by all means, go out in the sunshine. Again, you must expose your skin with no suntan lotion to the sun, 20 minutes without burning, to make sure you are getting that exposure to the sunlight on skin, not with suntan lotion on. You will not be able to convert to vitamin D status in the body. Um, so you have to get the sunshine on your skin. So do do that. But think about doing that test because if your level is actually quite low right now and we're about to come into contact with more people and you know we've got this more freedom to go out and about then wouldn't it be great to think that you are doing something proactively for yourself helping to build this strong immunity for yourself and helping to protect yourself there is another um, study that's been done by the University of East Anglia that I printed out as well um, showing a graph and the correlation between um, levels of vitamin D as a nation 
and the um, levels of infection numbers. So this isn't death, but it is infection numbers. And there is this graph, and I don't know how well this is going to show up, but the um, the lower the vitamin D status, the higher the infection rate. And generally, of course, you're always going to get odd bits that come somewhere different, but as as your vitamin D status increases, the infection rate goes right down. Um, it's, of course, it's only one marker, but it's a really important marker. So if you do nothing, nothing else, I would think about supplementing vitamin D right now. But maybe if you can, go and do that test. As I said, it's very, very cheap. Google it, vitamin D testing, finger prick blood test, very simple to do. And results come back really quickly by email to you. Um, but think about testing. Now, the measurement, um, the amount that the um, Public Health England will advise you to take, and the measurement is in IUs in the UK, is about 400 IU. But in other countries, the measurement is different. The amount they recommend you take, um, in the UK, it's 400 IU daily. In the US, it's 600 IU. In Germany, it's 800 IU. To be perfectly frank, I would think about taking 1,000 IU for about a month, especially if you haven't done the testing. Um, testing will enable you to decide um, how long you should supplement for and whether you should um, maybe take more than 1,000. Most supplements on the market today, the companies I deal with, don't really start at a dosage that's lower than 1,000 IU. And of course, you're always looking for vitamin D to be in the vitamin D3. That's the most active and absorbable form in the body. Um, a couple of other quick statistics here um, that came from Dr. McCullough. Um, 42% of the US population is likely to be deficient in vitamin D. Um, and amongst that, amongst the black community, about 82% are likely to be deficient in vitamin D. And because this is the US um, statistics, the Hispanic population are likely to be 69% or are 69% are likely to be deficient. So yeah, you know, by the end of summer, we may have built up enough reserves if we're getting in the sun. And the problem really for older people and those in care homes is they're not really getting in the sunshine. And often, you know, we've got very hot weather, but mostly our weather's not that hot. So they're often really covered up and they're not getting that exposure. So we need to get our arms out, um, arms and legs out and, and make sure we're getting that sunshine. So do that as well but do think about supplementing so that you're doing everything that you can just to help um, increase your levels. Um, so I hope that's been useful, slightly shorter tonight. I'm really passionate about this. I think you can probably tell that. But, you know, as I said, I find it really shocking that we hear absolutely nothing about self-care. Absolutely nothing. It's as though, you know, we're just going to be hit by this virus and it's all potluck what's going to happen to us, you know. And in terms of infection rates and how seriously we get this and death rates, there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. And I think we couldn't be further from the truth about that. So if you're reasonably fit and well, those with significant health conditions, they do have other reasons to be concerned, but there's nothing for them to stop thinking about vitamin D status in their body. Um, but let's do all we can to stay fit and well and not to be scared and worried about getting back out into public life, the fact that distancing measures are reducing um, and just getting back to a little bit more normality. So I hope you found that useful. Now, all my you, all of my Facebook lives are moving onto YouTube, uh, Peyton Principles Natural Health. That's where you'll find them. They may not all be there at the moment. And my course to for self-help on IBS is likely to be released next week. Just a little bit of tweaking and fine-tuning going on, but it's likely to be released next week. So look out for more information about that. And if you would like to be on my newsletter, do drop me a note or DM me. Um, caroline at patentprinciples.com if you'd like to be on my newsletter for more information and news that I send out every month. So take care everyone, enjoy this sunshine, get out in that sun, get your vitamin D, but do think about supplementing as well. Take care.